And welcome to The Factor Uncensored. Thank you for joining us tonight. The family of a U.S. veteran in Dallas is demanding answers about his bizarre death tonight. Debony Moffitt was found dead inside of a public storage unit. Family members are still waiting on an autopsy along with the investigation to determine why he died or if there was any foul play involved. We spoke to his father in Atlanta and the family attorney based in Dallas. And joining us now here on The Factor on Sensitive is the father of Devaney Moffitt, uh, Lieutenant D.L. Moffitt and their family attorney, Justin A. Moore, who's based in Dallas. Uh, Mr. Moffitt, Lieutenant Moffitt, first of all, what happened to your son? It's our understanding that you guys noticed he disappeared back on March 27th. Uh, yes, he was um, didn't show up for work, was listed for three days. Um, my daughter, uh, very close to him, went to go look for him for about a, uh, about a week. And then she called me and said, Daddy, I can't find Ebony. Um, can you help us come and look? And then I came and me and some uh, friends came from Georgia and various other states to come uh, help in this search. The search beforehand, the police were helping my daughter in her initial search. And what were uh, investigators able to find, and that being police in the Dallas Arlington area? When you guys reported to them, it's my understanding that they went to a storage facility that he rented, but never found anything, right? Uh, we got information that he was uh, in one storage facility and they evicted him. Um, the police uh, flew the drones around a park and they pinged his phone and he came back to a local park in the area. Uh, we searched that park and then when I came on scene, then we continued this, uh, this search, very systematic search from surrounding storage facilities, which led to the one where initially he was finally found. Now, do you think he may have been living there or staying there at that storage facility? Definitely. Uh, he was staying at a storage facility about uh, two blocks away. Um, they evicted him from there because you cannot live in there. And then um, he was the facility he found him and he was living in it because it was evident that he was inside there. He had some of his items around him. And the way that uh, his uh, his body was found is that he was um, living there. He had a sleeping bag, um, you know, bedding, things like that. Now, for those who are wondering why he would be living in a storage facility, uh, it's my understanding he struggled with some mental health issues, but he was a functioning adult uh making a living never missed a day of work in two years at the convenience stores of 7-eleven that he worked there right that is that's totally true um my son just had some challenges um he just he wanted always to be on his own he enjoyed just being on his own um why he would choose to live in a store facility i don't know um but that's what he chose to do and i've spoken with him before about getting apartments things like that he just he lived in them but then he just, again, he, was, he struggled uh, with his mental health his issues. He was uh, struggling with schizophrenia and um, bipolar. And that aside, both you and Justin, that aside, the mental health issue and struggle aside, you still believe that there may be some foul, foul play involved here because you have not received the autopsy, uh, which would tell you uh, or give you indications if there was some substance involved, a toxicology report, but you still don't have that. And you guys are demanding answers from local law enforce, uh, enforcement uh, investigators there in Arlington, right? That is correct. correct. Yeah, correct. So, you know, Isaiah, first of all, thanks for providing your platform for us to tell this story. And mental health issues aside, you know, our problem is that public storage, if they knew Debony was in that unit or not, and we have every indication that, that we believe that they did know, they should have had some type of measures in place to ensure that someone would not die on their property. There's also questions on if Debony was actually locked in a unit because you can only lock these units from the outside. Now, what Mr. Moffett and the search party discovered, along with the uh, Arlington Police Department, the first time they showed up to this specific public storage uh, facility, they went to Debony's unit and it was locked. The next day, they found his body inside of the unit and they were able to unlock it and discover it, that he was there. There's been no you know, description or there's been no detailing on if they unlocked that unit themselves or if they found it unlocked. All we know is that Debony was found inside of this uh, public storage unit, especially after uh, the Moffettes and their search party had been looking for him. He was found inside of the storage unit, deceased. Public storage was put on notice 
multiple times, you know, by phone call, by search parties, by multiple um, interactions with the police, that Deputy Moffett, uh, Deputy Moffett was likely going to show up to this unit and try to get inside of it. Mm -hmm. um, but nevertheless, they disregarded the fact that they were put on notice and they allowed him to get him back, uh, get back to the facility and to the unit. And now we need to figure out how he was locked inside of it or if he was able to get let in and, um, you know, and, and violate uh, public uh, storage's uh, policies on people living in the unit. Nevertheless, this is why they have a policy in place for people not to live in units because it's dangerous. These places aren't supposed to be used as residences. We got to protect folks that are dealing with mental health issues from themselves. We don't know if he died due to an overdose. We don't know if he caused himself harm. We don't know if he suffocated in the unit. That's why we need, for one, we need the autopsy completed by uh, Tarrant County. And two, we need answers from public stores to figure out how in the world did he get back there uh, in violation of their policies. Uh, we're just looking for questions, Isaiah. I mean, we're looking for we're just looking for answers, Isaiah, and we have a lot of questions that need to be answered. Now, we've reached out to public storage for a statement on this investigation and still nothing so far. We'll continue this conversation after the break. And welcome back to the Factor on Center. A family has lost their loved one and they are pretty pissed off and they're demanding answers. They want to know what happened to him. It's been months since Debony Maffitt's body has been found in a public storage unit in the Dallas area, specifically Arlington. Now, his father is beyond frustrated. He says the company is not cooperating or coming forward with helpful information. And Lieutenant Moffitt, you're also a law enforcement officer, but a father first in this situation. How frustrating is it for you to have your son found dead on March 27th, and we're in June now, and you still have no answers? It's it's very frustrating. Um, I had to take some time off from work to get my mind back together, to get my heart back together, to get in a, um, a healthy place so I can continue to serve. Um, it's just, it, it's hard. Um, again, we would just want answers. If uh, the public storage would have been cooperative on that first day, we wouldn't be in this position. Um, yes, it would still hurt. Yes, we would still be grieving, but at least we would have answers and we wouldn't have to, uh, wouldn't have these questions, these unanswered questions. And just to and just to add to that, I think one of the things that's really concerning is that they interacted with a specific employee mm -hmm. who actively dodged their inquiry. So the, this this employee responded to the missing persons notifications and uh, publications that they put out in the community. He specifically called the Moffets, and when the Moffets showed up to that public uh, storage facility, he dodged every question they had about Debony. Ultimately. The Moffettes called the police to show up, and this person, according to the Moffettes, locked himself in a back room to prevent himself from being questioned by police. Wow. Police have to let them. Police have to let them. They have to let their, themselves go back to the units to check themselves without any assistance from public storage. So this is why the Moffettes are alleging that there is a cover up by the public storage uh, employees based on this interaction with a specific employee who. Uh, you know, based on his uh, behavior with the Moffettes, indicate that he might have known something and he wanted to cover it up when they showed up that day looking for their son. Can I add something? Sure. Um, yeah, when, when speaking to him, I asked him to rent, I asked if I could rent a space. He denied me to renting a space. He denied me um, coming onto the property, even after I gave him the flyer, identified myself, told him what was going on. Um, he was just totally dismissive. When the police showed, uh, showed up. He said, I can't let you in onto the property without the police. Literally, when that happened, the police showed up. Um, I went to speak to the police. He locked the door, went into a rear room, refused to come out. Um, my fiance had called public storage, kind of called them. The police had called the office. No one answered and even called the corporate offices and was hung up on. Incredible. Well, we will follow up with you. Hopefully, you will get the answers that you're looking for and that you need. We appreciate your time and you sharing this story here on The Factor Uncensored tonight.